Tammy didn't listen to me. I just got back to the car after checking out and paying the bill. When I handed the manager my room key across the counter, he ignored it. Instead, he stood up, walked to the wall behind his desk, and flicked on the switch. A red glow flickered on the walls. I turned around thinking it might be a police light, but it was he who turned on the flashing vacancy sign. Our room must have been the last one available, and now that we were done, the manager was trying to rent it out twice in one evening. The next thing he did was pick up the phone, press two numbers, pause, and then say Doreen. Number three, urgently, only after that, did he return to the counter with my bill. After paying and returning to my car, I saw the maid's card already in front of the open door of the room where Tammy and I had spent the last hour. I got in the car, thanked Tammy for the great time I had and told her how much fun I had with her. As usual, she didn't listen to me because she was completely engrossed in her phone. The same thing happened on the way to the motel as if our time together was just a temporary distraction from her endless texting with her friends. I tried to make my words sound sensory. But in reality, I was only pretending. I felt relaxed and satisfied because she knew how to push my buttons and make me enjoy herself. In return, I usually gave her some good sex from which she was delighted. There was nothing more to our relationship than that. As I finished my casual expression of gratitude, I saw another car quickly pull into the parking lot not far from my car. I wasn't worried because most of the lights in the motel parking lot were out, and I parked carefully in a lot so dark that no one could tell what color my car was, let alone see my license plates. The new car was parked almost directly in front of the office, so it was bathed in white light, highlighted by a flashing red vacancy sign. I saw a man get out of the car and quickly go to the office. While I was fumbling with the keys, the man left the office he signed up almost as quickly as I did. His passenger, a woman, got out of the car and ran towards him. At the same time, she turned her head in all directions. She reminded me of the first time I met Tammy. I looked around just like she was doing now. Because I was scared to death that someone would see me. Tammy didn't care about anything other than revenge on her unfaithful husband. I sank into my seat watching the woman. I knew I was in the dark and she couldn't see me, but there was no point in taking the risk. The woman stepped into the white light. The vacancy sign flashed bright red, and her worried face was clearly illuminated. My heart has stopped. It was Helen two seconds later. They were at the door of the room. The maid has already left. My wife entered the room and the door closed behind them. My first instinct was to jump out of the car, break down the door, beat the man to a pulp and drank Helen by her hair to my car. But I pulled myself together and took a deep breath. I looked at Tammy to see if she had seen anything. She was completely immersed in her phone. When I calmed down, I became scared. My throat tightened. It felt like someone was strangling me to death. These were my physical and mental to the realization that I could stop Helen before she cheated. But if I did, it would destroy our marriage. I started the car because I didn't trust myself. If I had stayed there, I might have done something I would regret for the rest of my life. I quickly drove to the mall where Tammy had left her car. As a, I parked a few rows behind. She felt that the car was not moving, looked up saw where we were and opened the door. Bye, bye. A second later, she disappeared from my sight. I looked around the parking lot and didn't see anyone. I screamed, and then I couldn't stand it and burst into tears. I hit the steering wheel so hard that my hand hurt. I also wanted to hit myself on the head hard enough to drive away the thoughts that were racing wildly in my brain. I don't know how long it took until I calmed down. I didn't look at watch, but I knew that now I had one less question left. The maid didn't have time to change the betting, so she probably just laid it on top. By this time, Helen was covered in the dried sweat that Tammy and I had left there. I choked on the thought. I forced myself to get that image out of my head and think about what would happen. What are my options? I could go home immediately, pay Mrs. Reynolds and send her home. I might have a couple of drinks before Helen gets home. 
When she sees my car in the garage, she will have time to rehearse her story before she enters. I know roughly how it will be. She needed to buy something at the mall. I wondered if this was the same shopping center where I parked. Should I drive around? Find her car and wait for her. Helen plans carefully as do I. She probably bought what she needed in advance and keeps it in her trunk. The purchases are in her trunk in a shopping bag. Later in the evening, when he drops her off at the mall, she goes inside with her bag and walks around a bit hoping to run into someone she knows, so she can have evidence that she went shopping there that evening, then she will go with her bag to the car. This is what I would see if I accidentally found her car and caught her off guard. She'll be surprised to see me when she gets home because I told her I have to work late and won't come until she's asleep. I wondered if she had called me at the office to check on me before leaving home. It didn't matter because my rear was covered if my phone went directly to voicemail. She knew it meant I was talking to a client after hours. There was no one else in the office to talk to. After my dates with Tammy, I always rushed back to the office and worked alone for a couple of hours. I would wait for a call from Helen that she was going to bed and then I would leave after a while and go straight home. There's no need to go back to the office tonight. I don't think Helen will call me from the motel. What should I tell her when she gets home? Should I try to confuse her? I could start by asking her what she bought. Was she at the mall where my sister worked? Did she see her? She certainly wouldn't look exhausted and sweaty. She'd take a shower and look fresh as a daisy for Mrs. Reynolds's sake. Suppose I looked into her eyes. What would I see? As soon as I thought about this scene, I knew it would never happen. I never asked her about shopping. I might have gotten away with asking one time, but Helen's and Tenny would have gone up after that. I shuddered, imagining how everything would happen. What started with me interrogating her will end with her interrogating me. She won't rest until she knows what's on my mind. I would try to shut up, but everything would end the same as always. She would find a way to make me tell everything. She would have confessed and explained to me her reasons for cheating. She would probably admit that they weren't good enough. The only good enough reason would have been revenge, but that was not the case. If she knew I was at the motel and intended to get back at me, she would have walked up to my car holding the man's hand and spat on my window before entering the room. She would also turn around at the door and give me the middle finger before entering. If I started breaking down the door, she would call the police and let me spend the night in jail. No, she had no idea I was there. She was there for herself. Why? Was I not enough for her? She never seemed unsatisfied in bed. If she wanted something special, she always told me this rarely happened. Helen was usually upbeat and positive. She always smiled. I tried to remember if there were any signs that she was unhappy with me. Suddenly it dawned on me. About a month ago, she asked me if I was getting bored with her immediately and emphatically told her how crazy that sounded. She was and will always be the most exciting thing in my life. Now I was struck by lightning where this question came from. It wasn't dissatisfaction. It was a disappointment. How many times has she been disappointed? I remembered a couple, but there were probably many more. She was in a great mood but I was tired. She never criticized me. But she was disappointed. She once remarked that I used to demand so much love that it bores her at times, but now she seemed to want it more than I did. I told her that's not true. Didn't I prove how much I lusted after her every time we made love? But she felt that something was wrong. I worked hard, played with the kids, did things around the house, like always, but now I had someone else to worry about. Tammy, I had never thought about it before. But I was having as much sex as always, maybe even more. The difference was that now there were two women providing it. So one of them was rejected. She was upset and doubted herself. Helen is as beautiful and sexy as any woman 10 to 15 years younger. I was sure she was sometimes on in the office since I was no longer courting her the way I used to. She was probably wondering about her attractiveness as a woman, this left her vulnerable to the attention of someone who took advantage of her weakened defenses. Once she decided to give in to him, I'm sure she was prepared. She thought through shopping at the mall or came up with another scheme that was even more reliable. She knew that Mrs. Reynolds babysat only a few families and was available on short notice most days. 
just like Tammy had done, she probably scouted out all the out-of-the-way cheap motels so she and the man could drive from one to the other until they found an opening. Once she finished getting ready, all Helen had to do was wait until the time I called her and told her I had to work late. It was this evening. After finishing her conversation with me, she called her boyfriend and then Mrs. Reynolds. She was sure that she would return home long before me, but even if I accidentally returned home, she probably had a plan to present it. She never expected me to leave the motel at the same time they checked in. How was she to know that her traitorous husband been decided that he wouldn't hurt anyone if he helped Tammy get revenge on her husband and then proceeded to have sex with Tammy for no reason other than that she was different and a little different from Helen. She was definitely neither prettier nor a better lover. I liked Tammy, but I didn't have any special feelings for her. There was no reason for my affair. Why did I only see this now? If I had run into Helen when I got home, she would have cried and I would have cried. She would admit everything, and I would admit everything. We would forgive each other and promise to never cheat again. And we would live unhappily from then on, at least until the kids left for college. It would have been terrible for Helen, but I wasn't about her right now. I selfishly thought only of myself. I would have been destroyed. Why? In the end, she cheated and I cheated. We were even. The scales were balanced. Not really. I'd get a double whammy. I will always be haunted by the image Helen sneaking a look around the parking lot as she ran to the door to get into the same bed Tammy and I had been in just minutes earlier, but there would be something a million times worse, her eyes. The admiration and adoration that always came from them will disappear. Her love for me was so strong that sometimes I felt her radiant warmth. It makes me glad that I'm alive and that I'm her man. I gave thanks every Sunday for being blessed with her. Once she knew what I had done, Helen's eyes would no longer see me as special and different. The best husband, father, and lover in the world as she liked to remind me. She could put on a performance for me and the children as well as for our family and friends. But I knew there would be many times when we would be alone and she would get tired. She would let her guard down, and I would see the pain and sadness of losing her complete confidence, security, and trust in me. That's why I would have to divorce her as soon as the kids left. I can't look into those eyes every day alone. She idolized me, and I took it for granted. I took her for granted. Every time her eyes showed me that I had messed up, it would be like a stab to the heart. No, it shouldn't be like this at all. She will never know what I did or what I knew. Her life will be better than ever. No matter how much money I have to leave on the table, I will be coming home for dinner every night from now on. I didn't travel often for business. But that's all behind me now. We don't need money that much. I'm going to stick to her like glue so she won't even think about leaving me again. She'll get more sex from me than a porn star. I won't stop until she tells me she's in too much pain to continue. I'll count how many times a month I made her come and try to beat the record as often as I can. We will do things together that we have never done before. One evening, we're going to sit down and write bucket lists and then work on them together. She will shine. For a moment, I wondered if Helen would ever regret her infidelity as she enjoyed her charmed life with a husband she considered faithful and our wonderful children. Probably not if she's like me. When I was with Tammy, I never thought about Helen. I knew she would never know, and what she didn't know wouldn't hurt her. Helen will probably feel the same way. I'm her happy, faithful husband, and she's my devoted wife. Since it only happened once, it didn't mean anything. If she has any guilt, she will let it go, making it up to me in weeks or months. Eventually, it will all fade from her mind, and she will be able to forget it ever happened, but not me. I already know that no matter how hard I try to put it out of my mind, I will never forget that evening when she came into the room after me. Subscribe to our channel so that your second half doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the